Eleanor Roosevelt, The Autobiography of Eleanor Roosevelt. Dive into the remarkable life of Eleanor Roosevelt, a woman who broke barriers and changed the world with her unwavering determination and passion. Discover her journey from a privileged childhood, her marriage to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, her rise in politics, and her impactful work as a human rights advocate. This summary of The Autobiography of Eleanor Roosevelt provides a glimpse into the life and times of one of America's most influential first ladies. Uncover Eleanor's path to becoming a world-respected diplomat, her role in the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and her tireless dedication to fighting for justice and equality. Be inspired by her unwavering commitment to peace and her refusal to let society's expectations hold her back. Inspiring Eleanor Roosevelt Eleanor Roosevelt was more than just the First Lady, she was an outspoken advocate on various issues, intent on making a difference in the world. Her tireless devotion to civil rights, women's rights, and other humanitarian efforts was evident through her actions and words. Undeterred by public opinion, she forged connections with influential leaders and gave a voice to the marginalized. Eleanor's transformative journey highlights the power of relentless pursuit for change, ultimately leaving an indelible mark on history. The Making of Eleanor Roosevelt Eleanor Roosevelt was born into privilege in 1884, the niece of President Theodore Roosevelt, but her life was marked by personal struggles and loss. Growing up feeling like an outsider, Eleanor experienced the trials of life even with money and status. Despite family tragedies, she developed intellectual curiosity and a sense of duty to help the less fortunate. While initially limiting herself to traditional roles as a wife and mother, Eleanor eventually came to play a vital role in shaping U.S. politics and championing the rights of women. Eleanor's upbringing was one of significant privilege. Born in New York City in 1884, she was surrounded by the trappings of wealth, from elegant carriages to the Roosevelt's influence, but she never felt entirely at ease. As a quiet and solemn child, her mother's unfortunate nickname for her was, Granny. Eleanor's appearance did not match the conventional beauty of her female relatives, and she sensed her mother's disappointment. Nevertheless, Eleanor's intellectual curiosity shone through, leading her to passionately pursue knowledge and understanding. Eleanor's parents, while wealthy, instilled in her the belief that the fortunate should help the less fortunate. This was a lesson Eleanor carried with her throughout her life. Yet, life was not without its challenges, and she experienced heavy loss at a young age. When she was just ten years old, both of her parents had passed away, leaving Eleanor an orphan. Determined to make the most of her education, Eleanor went to study in England, where she fell under the tutelage of Marie Sylvester, the school's French headmistress. Sylvester played a pivotal role in shaping Eleanor's growing interest in politics and global affairs. Upon finishing her education, Eleanor was forced by her grandmother into high society's marriage market, a whirl of parties and formal events where she once again felt like an outsider. However, Eleanor remained committed to her family's philanthropic values and began teaching physical activities to underprivileged children in New York City. At the age of 19, Eleanor married her distant cousin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The wedding itself was a significant social event, not necessarily because of her or her husband, but because of her uncle, President Theodore Roosevelt. The first decade of their marriage saw Eleanor and Franklin navigating the challenges of parenthood, including the crushing loss of a child. Despite keeping herself seemingly limited to the roles of wife and mother at the time, Eleanor took an interest in her husband's political pursuits. In 1910, Franklin entered the world of politics, joining the New York Senate. Eleanor, feeling it her duty to be supportive, occasionally attended political events and discussions in Washington. However, Eleanor's beliefs on gender roles were initially quite traditional. She found herself shocked when Franklin announced his support for women's suffrage, having grown up believing that men were superior in various ways. At that point, Eleanor viewed her contribution to politics as primarily involving hosting dinners for her husband's friends and their spouses. 
Over time, Eleanor Roosevelt would go on to become a fierce advocate for women's rights and a significant political figure in her own right. Although initially defined by her upbringing, marriage, and the societal expectations of her time, Eleanor's resilience, passion for learning, and dedication to helping others would shape her into a powerful and influential leader. Eleanor's Transformation and Compassion Eleanor Roosevelt's life experiences and challenges lead her to discover personal growth, a sense of purpose and a determination to help the less fortunate. Through her work with the Red Cross, the Women's Trade Union League, and her own social enterprises, Eleanor found her political footing and acted as a force for positive change. In 1914, as the shadow of World War I loomed, Eleanor Roosevelt's life took a turn when her husband, Franklin D. Roosevelt, was appointed Assistant Secretary of the Navy. The family moved to Washington, D.C., a city teeming with people contributing to the war effort. Eleanor recognized her responsibility to participate, and despite her privileged upbringing, she started working at the local Red Cross canteen. As her confidence grew through hospital visitations and fundraising initiatives, she discovered her capability to be a catalyst for positive change outside the confines of her home. The war ended in 1918, but Eleanor's trials persisted. In 1921, Franklin was diagnosed with polio, and she devoted herself to caring for him. Their circumstances pressed them to withdraw from their high society social circles, allowing Eleanor to pursue a career of her own. By the end of the 1920s, she became the chairperson of the Women's Division of the Democratic State Committee and participated in fundraising efforts for the Women's Trade Union League. Through her political work, Eleanor gained insight into the mechanisms of politics, uncovering the duality of politicians' capacity for both corruption and integrity. Despite witnessing these disheartening realities, Eleanor was not discouraged, she continued her mission to make a difference. She even began delivering political speeches, occasionally chuckling while sharing her message. In 1927, Eleanor's concern for America's workers motivated her to establish a handmade furniture company to employ jobless youth. Albeit it was not a long-term success, the venture provided work for many during the Great Depression, restoring dignity and security through employment. Alongside her dedication to work, Eleanor expanded into educational initiatives in the late 1920s. She purchased a girls' school in New York with her friends and began offering courses in American history and English literature. Determined to provide her students with valuable education, she even took them to observe city courts in session. Eleanor's experiences demonstrate an extraordinary journey of personal growth, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to creating opportunities for others. Eleanor's Unconventional First Lady Journey Eleanor Roosevelt, despite her fears of losing her personal life, transformed the role of First Lady, breaking from numerous conventions and placing great emphasis on social justice and workers' rights. From simple acts, like moving her own furniture to advocating for racial equality and fighting for legislation against lynching, Eleanor continually prioritized the well-being of marginalized communities. She also devoted herself to a daily magazine column and traveled to war zones during the World War II, a testament to her dedication and resolve. When Franklin Roosevelt became the governor of New York in 1928, both him and his wife Eleanor shared a genuine desire to make a difference in the lives of ordinary people. Due to Franklin's inability to walk, Eleanor visited state institutions such as children's hospitals and prisons on his behalf and provided detailed reports on their conditions. However, Franklin's ambitions went beyond the governorship, and he eventually became the President of the United States in 1932. Despite supporting her husband's aspirations, Eleanor was afraid of losing her personal life when Franklin became President. Nonetheless, she fully embraced the role of First Lady and revolutionized the way people perceived a President's wife. From operating her elevator and rearranging her furniture to supporting women in government positions and holding press conferences specifically for female reporters, Eleanor actively fought against sexist norms. Eleanor went as far as declining Secret Service protection for her safety, opting to carry a revolver and learn to shoot instead. Her progressive stance extended to racial equality, as she avidly supported anti-lynching legislation even when her husband failed to back it. 
Ignoring her political advisor's concerns, she hosted garden parties for African-American girls from local reform schools, valuing moral conviction above public opinion. Her empathy for workers intensified when she traveled across the country and documented the conditions of those suffering from the Great Depression, such as the coal mining community in West Virginia where families lived on a mere dollar a week. As a strong advocate for independence, including financial autonomy, Eleanor committed to writing a daily magazine column titled My Day for Five Years, only missing the deadline once. Through this column, she shared insights on her work and daily life in the White House. When the Second World War broke out, Eleanor's sons joined the military. This experience deepened her connection to other mothers fearing for their children and fueled her commitment to abolishing warfare. Bravely venturing to war zones worldwide, Eleanor provided much-needed support for the Allied troops, exemplifying her unwavering spirit. At the end of the war, in 1945, Franklin sadly passed away, and Eleanor moved out of the White House, leaving the family estate to the government and relocating to a small cottage on the property. While her home grew smaller, her political life was about to expand beyond her wildest dreams. Rising to the United Nations Challenge In 1945 Eleanor Roosevelt found herself at a crossroads when President Truman invited her to serve as a member of the newly formed United Nations. Despite the enormity of the task ahead and her initial hesitation, Eleanor rose to the challenge, spearheading diplomatic efforts, breaking barriers for women, and championing human rights. Her lasting impact on the international community is still felt today, as her mission of world peace, cooperation, and the development of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights lives on. When President Truman asked Eleanor Roosevelt to be a part of the United Nations American delegation in 1945, she thought it nearly impossible. Eleanor had never experienced anything like this before, however, her passion for world peace and honoring her late husband's legacy propelled her to accept this daunting role. The road was not an easy one. As the only woman present during the first meeting in 1946, Eleanor felt unwelcome and understood that any failure on her part would tarnish women's reputation. Undeterred, she thrived by engaging with women from other delegations and creating informal gatherings that fostered rapport and understanding among different countries. Eleanor's grit and wit were unmistakable when facing the highly contested topic of war refugees in Germany after World War II. She masterfully demonstrated the power of oratory as she influenced the Latin American allies to vote with the West, advocating for the refugees' right to choose their destiny, and ultimately won over the Soviets in the process. A pivotal moment in Eleanor's UN career came when she was elected chairperson of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights in spring 1946. The commission had the immense undertaking of determining the international community's approach to human rights. Along the way, she encountered opposition from the Soviet Union's delegation and even sympathy from the head of the Czechoslovakian delegation, who felt compelled to side with Russia. With unwavering determination, Eleanor carried an astonishing workload, convening meetings even in the midst of her hectic travel schedule. All her efforts culminated in the monumental and world-changing Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. This groundbreaking document enshrined the rights and freedoms of all individuals, regardless of gender, race, or religion, promising a legally binding treaty with a system for enforcement. Though her time with the United Nations came to an end in 1952, Eleanor's dedication to global peace endured throughout her life. In the 1950s, she met with leaders around the world, promoting American values of democracy and international cooperation, and fostering friendships grounded in respect. Until her passing in 1963, Eleanor remained vigilant of the ongoing challenges facing humanity and believed there was always more work to be done. As a friend once said of her, she preferred lighting a candle than cursing the darkness, and with her glowing presence, Eleanor Roosevelt paved the way for a brighter world. In the end, Eleanor Roosevelt's life spanned a vast array of experiences filled with immense personal growth, political accomplishments, and societal transformations. Overcoming personal tragedies and societal expectations, Eleanor shattered barriers and helped shape global human rights guidelines. Her legacy serves as a symbol of hope, 
resilience, and determination for future generations. Remember Eleanor for her unmatched dedication to improving humanity and her belief that, despite ongoing global challenges, progress can be made with a positive attitude and the passion to make a difference. The life of Eleanor Roosevelt teaches us to always pursue justice, equality, and peace, and to look within ourselves to find the strength to make a meaningful impact on the world.